Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Demon Hour, and yes, we are back with another Batman 66 episode review. Today, we'll be reviewing the episode, The Puzzles Are Coming, the introduction to the puzzler in this two part, for this two-parter. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get into the review. We begin this episode with this new villain, along with his henchmen, in a penthouse across police headquarters. They then fire a toy, ro uh, a toy rocket gadget into police headquarters. Attached to this rocket was essentially a note. Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara look at the note, and when it says that the puzzles are coming, they realize it's their old adversary, the puzzler. So once again, it is another villain that everyone knows except the audience. However, it should be noted, the puzzler was not meant to exist. This was clearly meant to be with those episodes, but because of the controversy behind basically whatever story we've been told about why Frank Borshin never returned for Riddler for season two, their compromise was to essentially <clears throat> invent the puzzler, who is honestly, a, a, who I will be honest, is a rather uninteresting and rather bland villain who is clearly a stand-in for the Riddler. Anyway, back to the episode. They, of course, Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara do what they always do. They call up Batman and Robin. Opening credits, they come here. And once again, and when Batman and Robin get there, they then decipher the clue and realize it's pointing to a local millionaire with many, many, many monopolies, Artemis Canab. They then make their way there. We then see the puzzler playing, essentially, Monopoly with Artemis Canab. Batman and Robin arrive, and basically, there's this confrontation between the puzzler, as they happen to know him. However, Artemis Canab says he is not in, tr in trouble. And basically, the puzzler here is to offer him a new business venture to create puzzle balloons. The puzzler then gives a balloon back to Batman, uh, to Robin, and just as Batman and Robin are about to leave the balcony, Artemis asks if they could leave through the door rather than the window, and of course they oblige. But they warn him that this man is not called Puzzler for a reason. They get back to the Batcave and solve this puzzle again. Because they can't use Riddler, technically they can't use Riddles, so they call them puzzles. But let's be honest, it's clearly Riddler. Even I knew that when watching these episodes. Anyway, they manage to deduce that the, that the Riddle is essentially where they plan to see uh, the red, uh, the plane, the red soul where the society's creme de la creme are there, and know that the puzzler will no doubt try to steal all the jewels and basically everything fancy there. We then cut to the puzzler with these men who are at the event, just as Artemis Canab is leaving. We then find his female accomplice, who we find out simply wants to be a movie star. Now, where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, the Riddler's accomplice in the last few episodes of season one wanted to do that. Anyway, as they go in, they, as they go in and spread the balloons out, after that, they then start popping them, which raises this gas, which causes everyone to be motionlessly still. They steal all the jewels, and of course, the Riddler's accomplice makes her escape. Just as that's happening, Batman and Robin arrive. They spray him with the same gas, but just as that's happening, the puzzler goes into the plane and starts taking pictures of the cockpit. He leaves it behind another puzzle. Batman and Robin manages to, with some bat logic, deduce where the puzzler is, basically at his hideout at the balloon factory where he's making all these balloons. Batman and Robin arrive at the factory, and a bat fight breaks out, with, of course, them being victorious over the fight. However, the puzzler, who is one of those, another one of those villains who rather stand back and watch the fights happen, throws these sort of darts at them, which incapacitates them and knocks them out. Batman and Robin are then placed in a hot air balloon, which is with them tied to go up in the air. With a special gadget, which once they hit a certain altitude, the basket will open and they will essentially fall to their deaths. And that's where we end this episode. There's nothing really new in regards to the main cast. I can say really nothing's really changed, or really an interesting story that is developed for the characters. It's just meek. And that's kind of really, to be honest, to describe this episode going forward. And the biggest example on that is its main villain. Speaking of that, let's get to the puzzler. Okay, let's uh, acknowledge the elephant in the room. Uh, the puzzler here is, as we all can see, is clearly a stand-in for the Riddler. Now, there's there's so many stories throughout season for why the Riddler never returned for season two. Uh, one story is Frank Gorshin had too much of a touring schedule, clubs and all that, he couldn't, you know, take time off to essentially appear on the show. 
because of that, for this particular pair of episodes, they essentially, what was meant to be Riddler, rewritten it and made it the Puzzler. Now, the Puzzler is technically a comic book villain. He did appear in the Superman comics, though he was a very minor league one. And just like with the Archer, who was also a Superman villain, they sort of rewritten him to be, you know, something completely different compared to the source material. Essentially, the Puzzler is pretty much a knockoff of the Riddler. And what you... And other than, arguably, his flair for Shakespeare, which I think makes him a little bit interesting, and also his love for aviation, he is still a pretty bland villain. Nothing against the actor in question, who is doing a good job with what he's given, but sadly, that job is just not good enough. He, no offense, the puzzler is a really bland and weak villain. Not the worst in the series, I'll grant him that, but he's just bland and just completely uninteresting. The puzzles are coming, for me, are okay, are uh, meek, are uh, either okay to meek episodes. I feel that these episodes might be a bit better if the Riddler was in it, but then again, we don't. We have, once again, a villain introduced Everyone knows except us. For me, there's so great possible story materials you could have gone with this episode. You could have made it that there's someone who's stealing the Riddler's gimmick, you know, Riddler's gimmick, and he's simply trying to take revenge on it. There's so many good possibilities. And throughout the episodes, we could have made it that we're getting used to this guy's MO, his, you know, his quirks and basically his obsessions. But no, it's once again a villain that is introduced we do not know. Other than that, The Puzzles Are Coming is just a meek episode. And honestly, kind of just, I don't know. I don't know if there's really a word to describe it other than meek. Anyway, that's, that's my thoughts on the matter. And there we have it. That is The Puzzles Are Coming. <clears throat> tune in next time. Tune in next time. We've viewed the part two to this villain's caper. So until then, join us next time in the same Stephen Hour, the same Stephen Channel, ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.